Good morning, everybody. This is Dawn at Always in Stitches in Noblesville. And uh, it's time for Needle Punch again. So we're here, we're doing a, a monthly program with the Celebrate book, which is uh, Teresa Kogut's um, book of, I think it's 14 designs. 13 designs, something like that. I want to that. guess 15 designs. You would? You would guess we're, that? Because we're celebrating 15 years of needlework. Oh, okay. Well, it is 15 designs. Oh! How nice of you to even remember that. So anyway, but in this book is just the color. There's no color pictures of any of the projects except for this one on the cover. So that's what made us decide to do uh, one of each of these designs. There's 15, so we're only going to get 12 of them in, but by the time you do all 12 of these, you'll, you'll be able to do the other two, no problem. But um, this month, I've uh, decided that I wanted to punch six strands instead of three. I normally punch three strands and uh, so throughout the book, you know, we're up to month 10. Uh, so in October I decided the design was fairly simple and I thought, well, that would be a good way to get a feel for how it feels to punch with uh, six strands of uh, floss. So um, I've been really busy and so, uh, Monday after I got off work, I work on Mondays and Fridays. Monday when I got off of work, I decided, well, I better get this going because Friday's our video. And I got my stuff out. And this is what I keep my stuff in. Well, first of all, this is the bag I keep it in. It looks like this when you come to the store. It is $20.99, but it fits everything. I have all 12 projects in here. All 12, uh, wow. not the finished project, but all 12 of the things of the kits. So and what I did is I just took a picture of the design. I took a photocopy, I'm sorry, of the design. And I put all my stuff in uh, the bag that goes with that particular project. So this is this month's project. And um, I keep all my tools in my fun little Mary Inglebright uh, tin that I got 260 years ago. I mean, this is so old that it has my old address on it. Um, so I oh, keep look everything. At all those teacups. Yeah, isn't that cute? Yeah. So I keep all my tool tools in here. So here are my punches. Here are the nibs to my punch. Here's my punch. Here's my uh, threader, and these are my scissors. So everything, and then here's my pen, should I want to uh, copy my pattern onto my design with. So there's that, that's all my good stuff. Um, and I just keep that in here, but the one thing I used to do is I just had my nibs out loosey-goosey in here, okay? Nibs, you mean uh, the, my nibs, my uh, the, needles. Oh, the needles. My needles. needles. Okay. Yeah, my needles. And yeah, that makes sense. I mean, yeah, just throw them in there. Except I didn't have the little protector on them. Protector. Yeah, there's a little protector when oh. you buy them. When you buy them, this the you little see, sleeve. they come with a little uh, plastic. I see it. I see it. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't have that on them. I just took them off of them. And I just let them roam around in here. And so when I got my medium needle out, because I always punch with my small needle for three strands, but for six strands, you have to use your medium needle. So I got my medium needle out, I got it all threaded, and I'm punching away, and it's making the most horrible clicking sound. You want some of that clicking sound, you know, that's normal. But this was abnormal clicking sound. And then I started breaking threads in my weaver's cloth. And it was like, what's going on for heaven's sakes? So I unthreaded my needle and I found a burr on the end of my uh, nib because I had left it in here. Evidently, it had gotten back and forth, back and forth, and the tip had gotten bent over. Okay, so I thought, okay, well, um, you know, I'm a MacGyver. Yeah, so, MacGyver. Yeah, I just got my uh, 
my metal fingernail file yeah. out, and I thought, well, I can just, you know, file scrub, it down. File that nip, that that little burr right off. Well, I did that. I filed the little Good burr right you. off. Yeah, and it didn't work. Oh. Yeah, because not only did I file the nip, the the burr off, the burr was the tip of the needle, the point, the thing that made the floss go through the fabric. Well, it was so dull. I mean, because I had just filed off the the tip of the of the needle, and I tried and I, on the side, and I tried to get a point back. It was not. Uh, there was just no turning back. So this is all I got done. Let me show you. So needless to say, I don't have my piece finished. Okay. This is all I got done, and I'm going to turn it over so you can see. Look at these little white threads that are sticking up. See that? That's the actual weaver's cloth that has come up that I have cut because my mm. uh, nib, my needle had that little, little burr on the end. So I couldn't get back to the shop until today, Friday, to get myself a new uh, tip. So, to make sure that doesn't happen again, I'm going to buy extras. I'm going to buy an extra small one and an extra medium. I'm going to buy two mediums, and I'm going to throw this old medium one away because it is just nasty. It's, it's going in the sharps container. Yeah, it's just nasty. Let's see. Oh, I probably won't be able to focus on that. Yeah. Oh, wait. Well, yeah, kind of. It, it doesn't have a burr anymore, but it also <laughs> doesn't have a point. Yikes. And it's, it's very dull. Very dull. So... Another thing that I've learned is when it's in the holder, this is where I should park it. I should park the needle up in the uh, container, the, the holder. So where's that bead at? I see like a slider. There it is. Yeah. So when I, when I punch, you know, these are all the uh, heights of the punch. I usually punch on a one. Sometimes if I want like... A pom pom or a bunny's butt to, you know, stick out his little round uh, button butt. Then I will go two, and then that'll raise the uh, pile a little bit higher. But I usually always do it on one. Can you see that little thing mm -hmm. going back and forth? Uh -huh. But when I'm done, I have to remember if I don't want to take the needle off that I'm going to par start parking it so that when it's in my tin, it's not slamming up against that point. Okay? So, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this apart, and I'm going to show you how to change the needle. I think I've done this in my, uh, my first video <coughs> when I talked about doing punch needle. So, I'm going to slide this until it comes all the way out. Now I'm going to tap on it. Can you see that there's a spring? And the spring has a taper to it. Okay? On all nibs except for the large, uh, I keep calling them nibs, but they're the needle. On all of the needles except for the large goes with this spring that uh, tapers down. The one that goes with the large uh, needle doesn't have a taper, okay? So you might want to, here, you might want to just put that spring in with your large. That's an awesome idea. Yeah, so that you know when you put that uh, needle in, you also have to change your spring. Ah. So I wanted to go I over did not that. Know that. Yeah, I wanted to go over that a little bit. So uh, this is my uh, pin, and here's my needle. And you can see that there's an M. Can they see that M right there? That stands for medium, and there is an arrow. See that arrow right there? If you twist this so that the arrows line up, this will come right off. See that? Uh -huh. Now I'm going to throw this away 
because this is not good for anything anymore. So I don't want to get confused. I'm going to take my uh, medium needle out. I'm going to take the protective sleeve off <coughs> so that I don't lose it. I'm going to put it back in my package. Okay, close that back up. Now I'm just going to do the reverse of what I just did. I'm going to find the arrow. I'm going to find the arrow on my needle. And I'm going to match those up. And then I'm going to twist. And now that's locked in. Okay. Then I've got to put my spring back in and make sure that you put the tapered side in first. Just let that fall where it does. Put the needle down in. That might be a better idea is to put the spring on the needle. That way you know it's on there good. I think that was a better idea. <laughs> got a tickle in my throat. <coughs> Excuse me. So now you can see that the nib is, in, I mean the needle is in. I'm going to set it at one and I'm ready to go. Let's get this one out of the way. Now another thing I found <coughs> was when I went to make my, uh, get my thread ready to uh, punch, this time we're getting all uh, DMC or weeks. Well, if I'm doing all six strands, there's no separating. So I don't have to cut or do anything to the skein. I can leave the skein whole. But I don't want to fight with the skein getting all tangly while I'm punching. So what I did was <clears throat> we have these little bobbins. And if you're a cross stitcher and you bobbinate your uh, floss, you're very familiar with these. If you're not a cross stitcher and you don't know about these, they're just plastic little bobbins that you wrap your floss around. Okay, so as I thread, as I uh, put my uh, floss on this bobbin, I go ahead and I uh, put that on there so that I know what number I'm working with. So let me do that with a with a piece of of uh, this uh, floss. So where are my bobbins? I brought some today. I know I did. <clears throat> yeah, here they are. So I brought my bag of bobbins, and <clears throat> this is an invaluable tip right here. See the number? There's two little sleeves on your floss. There's the one that says DMC, and then there's the one with the number. If you will pull your floss from the numbered end, it will not tangle. If you pull it from this end, there's a free end over here. If you pull it from that end, it's going to tangle. Okay? But 99% of the time, if you pull from the end with the number, it will not tangle on you. So what I do is, <clears throat> I take my bobbin, it's got a little slit right there, okay? And as I get it started, I'm going to take this off, and I'm just going to put that right in there, and I'm just going to wind my floss around. I'm holding my hand just like that. I'm just winding it around and see how it's just coming off. I'm not winding it really tight, but I've got this in my hand and I'm just holding it and it's just coming right off the skein. No um, tangling. And when I get done, and I'm not doing it real tight because I want this to be really loose so that when I thread my uh, needle, that it won't get caught up. Now 
Now I can see there's something going on here with the other end, so I'm gonna just kind of loosen that up and put that back in my hand. See how that just winds really nice? This only happens now if you will take it off of that one end, the end with the number. And make sure that you wind that in there because you want to remember the number. Now there are stickers with numbers on them or you can take a permanent marker and mark on your bobbins but then you can't reuse them. And for now on, if you bobbinate on cross stitch you definitely put the number on. But for... I, I haven't seen people take the label off and stick it underneath the thread. So if your number falls off and your number rubs off, well guess what? You got the label. Yeah. That's, that's a great idea. Yeah. So here we go. We're almost to the very end. It doesn't take a long time to do this, but at, when you thread your needle, you see, it's going to be a continuous long piece of uh, floss that you're not going to have to stop and start and stop and start and re-thread uh, your needle all the time like we do when we use three strands. And see how that just with no tangle at all, just goes ahead. And then to thread my needle, <clears throat> of course I'm gonna put my little threader right in the uh, needle because the needle is hollow. And then it sticks out a little bit on this end, it opens up and I'm gonna thread that ne uh, needle threader. I'm gonna pull that through and see when I pull how that's just that bobbin, uh, the uh, floss bobbin is just uh, freely rotating, allowing good access to my floss, you see. So now <clears throat> I'm gonna thread that little hole, put my thread through you should know how to do this because you've been needle punching with me now for 10 months. And that goes right through. Remember, you've got six strands in a medium nib, okay? And you're going to bring that down. Was like there a that. direction that you went through? on the needle yes you thread when you threaded it through the tip yes yeah, on that there's final a, step there's a beveled edge and there's a rounded edge and you put your needle uh threader through the rounded edge and bring your thread from the beveled edge up to the rounded edge so that the needle is feeding it through the hole See that? Hold on, stop. It's, it's in this little channel. I just have to focus. It. Okay, the thread is in the little channel right there. There it is. And then it goes through to the beveled edge. I mean, to the rounded edge. <clears throat> now, I'm going to go ahead and punch so you guys can hear what it's supposed to sound like. And I tell you what, it is a little bit of a learning curve. Uh, when you're used to doing three strands and you go to six strands, it almost feels like you're learning how to do it all over again because you kind of have to learn your spacing, you know, how, how far apart your stitches. When you're outlining, like I just, I've been outlining, I pretty much outline everything first. Do the small lines, do all the outlines first, and then come back and do the fill-in. That's basically how you do needle punch, punch needle. So now this is just willy-nilly free to, to just bounce around. So I'm going to come over here to the side, and I want you to listen. My other needle was making such a large sound that I just knew something was wrong. And you can kind of feel how big of a bite you're supposed to take. When you outline, you take a smaller bite. When you're filling in, you take a little bit bigger bite. 
but that's about the size of uh, that's about the noise that you want to hear you do want to hear that clicking and then just to turn the edge you know you always have the I don't know why that's not coming out. You always have the thread follow you. So you can see I've left a little bit between. And you can see about how far my stitches are and then we'll just turn that over and you can see how nice that fills in. And that's just two rows. See how much bigger that is? There's one row over here, and there's two rows over here. So it really fills in nice when you have six strands. So you would think, well, if I don't have to fill in as much, I'm leaving a little bit more space and the stitches are a little bit bigger, it won't take as much floss. It takes twice as much floss, okay? So <clears throat> the reason that I'm doing all this is to tell you the reason why the kits are not gonna be ready. Because we usually like for me to make the whole design so that we know how many floss strands go in the kit. We don't want you coming up short. Sometimes you will because some we don't all needle punch at the same distance. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. some needle punchers punch closer than other needle punchers. Dawn's a close so, together needle puncher. I am. I'm, I like for mine to be full. Nice and full. Yeah, nice and full. But you don't want it so full that it buckles. You know, if you're, when you take your stitchery out of the hoop and it pulls up or it buckles, then you're stitching too tight, okay? You're putting too many stitches in. Um, but I just wanted to let you know what can happen. Don't keep fighting, because I, look, I just, I just tried everything. I tried filing, I tried all kinds of things to get it to work, and I was doing pretty good, but it was tearing the fabric, and so I knew I had to stop. I just knew I had to stop, and, um, it's just a lesson learned. You don't let your uh, uh, needles bounce around in your tin box. That's the lesson I learned, okay? Keep that protective nib on the needle. Now I'm gonna just take this out. Watch this, how easy that is. I'm gonna put that back so that when I am ready to use that color, it'll be all ready for me, okay? But from now on, I'm gonna park my needle before I put it back in my tin. And when I say park it, I mean I'm just gonna, you can't just let it go willy-nilly like that. You have to park it in that little slot right there, okay? So this'll come all the way out, but this over here is where you park your needle. So now, when I put it in my tin box, there's not gonna be any slamming against the side of the box and I can put all the rest of my nibs, and I'm gonna throw that one nib away. This one is getting thrown away. Oh my goodness, I have had this nib so long, I got it at the back door in Greenwood, and it was only $3.95. So that had to be <laughs> 20 years ago, because now they're, how much are they now? $6.99. So, and there's even a, it's even different looking. So, you know, that was, that was kind of funny. So I'm, I think I'll save this little tip yeah, because, you know. save it in the vintage package. Yeah, save it in this little vintage package right here. And, uh, but throw this, throw this needle away. I don't want it to get confused with my other needles. So, and then I wanted to show you this. Now we don't have them in yet and I don't know, Lenine's not here today and I brought it to show her. But uh, this is a little gizmo. <clears throat> that helps open you. Open bottles of wine? No, it doesn't open bottles oh. of wine unless your bottles of wine are held together with a nut like this. Uh, but what this is, is you slide this in. Cork opener. And you can oh, tighten that's or nice. loosen. Now let me tell you, some people have arthritis and yes. have a really hard time getting that real tight. Yep. So this just gives you leverage to that's do awesome. that. Isn't that neat? That's really cool. Yeah, they're made here in Indiana even. 
Yeah. So we're That's gonna neat. see if Lenine will get some because some people just can't get that nut tightened. But I will tell you, if you tighten it with this, you also have to loosen it with this because <laughs> it'll be so tight you won't be able to do it with your hands. But it's it's a metal it's a metal gizmo. It's kind of heavy, really. Wow, somebody spent some time and it thought. It was strong. Really yeah, it wasn't that expensive that. either. I don't know where my paperwork is on it. I guess I got it at home, or maybe it's in my bag here. But anyway, that's just part of my needle punch uh, supplies. And pretty soon yeah. I'm going to grow out of my uh, box here. And I love these little snips. Lenine gave me these. Um. Uh, and I really like them. They're kind of a surgical tool, I think. But we have them here at the shop, and they're real nice. Peter, you have a pair of I these, don't you? I have a pair you? of those. I you can love get real them. close. You can get down yeah, real close super to close. your needle punch, and they're sharp. So I like that. So uh, the three things I showed you, four things I showed you. This. Look for this. I forget what it's called, but I'll have more information on it. Maybe when I come back next week and show you my needle punch all done, okay? So the kits are not gonna be ready this week, just so you know, just a little heads up, because I need to get this punch so that we uh, know how many thread strands of floss to give you. And uh, we'll, Peter and I will be back next Friday and we'll give you the lowdown on uh, the kits and what's going on and maybe some more information, more information on this tool that we like, okay? So uh, keep punching. If you don't have all your punches, all your uh, projects punched, uh, keep punching, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye.